The next topic in triggers is context variables. Context variables allows us to access the runtime context of any trigger. What that means is that if in any trigger we want to access the values of the records or access anything related to the records which actually initiated it and some other values as well, then in that case we can use the context variables. There are different different types of context variables available in Apex and we're going to look at each one of them one by one. Starting with trigger dot new trigger dot new is a context variable which returns the list of the records because of which the execution of the trigger got initiated or the database operation got initiated what that means let's say uh, let's understand that with the help of an example let's say uh, we created an account record because of which a trigger uh, got executed so in order to access that account record inside the trigger we can uh, take help of this context variable which is trigger.new some another example we are trying to update the uh, email emails of the contacts that we have there are 20 contacts for which we are updating uh, uh, the phone number field and in that case we want to access uh, all of those 20 records inside a trigger which gets executed uh, because of the updation of those uh, 20 contact records so with the help of trigger.new, we'll be able to access all of the records because of which a trigger got initiated or the trigger got executed or the database operation uh, yeah, got executed. Now let's look at the example which I've written down over here. In this example, what we've done is we've created a before insert trigger uh, with the help of which all what we want to do is we want to update the number of employees value of the account which is getting inserted. Listen to me once again. Let's say uh, we are creating a new record and it's for a company called as Blue Compass, right? Uh, so for whenever we will create a new account record for Blue Compass, number of employees field value will be updated to 1250, which I've written over here, right? Like this. So I, I just want a static value for all of the uh, number of uh, for all of the accounts which gets inserted into the database and uh, uh, like they should have a number of employees field value as 1250. So in that case, I'll be using trigger.new, uh, which will actually return me a list. Now, in order to make you understand it in a deeper level or, an, or on an architectural level, uh, I have created a diagram with the help of which we'll be able to understand trigger.new in, in an easier way. Let's have a look over here. So over here, let's say this is trigger.new reference variable. Uh, with, which is actually referring to a list which is present over here, right? This is the list. And this list has got indexes 0, 1, 2, and so on. And every on every index, there are different, different records because of which this the execution of this trigger uh, initiated, right? So on trigger.0, there's record 1. On trigger dot, uh, yeah, trigger dot new dot zero. It's it's not trigger dot zero. It's trigger dot new, and at the zeroth index, there is a reference of record one, right? So this is also a reference to the list, and uh, inside the list, they, we have got like multiple values. Uh, on the index zero, we have got record one. On the index one, we have got record two. On the index two, we have got record three. Uh, or yeah, and on the index three, we have got record four, and so forth and so on. As many records are there, uh, so like. Like the, uh, if there are 100 records because of which an execution of a trigger uh, happened or got initiated, there will be a list which will include all the 100 records and uh, that list will have reference to all the 100 records which will be able to access with just this, with just these square brackets and inside uh, it we can just pass on the reference. Over here I have written down non-bulkified. What that means is that the code that I have written over here will only work in case I am creating only a single record at a time. If I'll be creating two records at a time or if I'll be uh, yeah, inserting five records or like 100 records at a, at a single time, in that case, this code will only update the number of employees field value for the record one. Let me tell you why. So if in this code, what it says is go to trigger.new, from trigger.new go to uh, this 0 and from 0 you've got the reference to record 1 assign this reference to a here 
and uh, just update the a dot number of employees one two five zero. What will happen to record two? What will happen to record three? What will happen to record four? What will happen to record five? Nothing. So this is a non-bulkified code that I've written inside this trigger. Just to make you understand that uh, how this context variable actually works. Later on, I'll also explain you that how to actually bulkify the same trigger. But before than that, let's actually uh, let's let's go into our org and see that how when we are inserting a record, uh, how the number of employees field value gets updated when we are inserting a record. Let's go to our org and create a new account. Uh, whatever you want to write down, like what, what should be the account name? Yeah, B uh, Blue Compass. And see, employees field has got no value, right? And I'll just save this record. It got saved. And when I'll, when I'll go to the details, I'll see employees field value updated to 1250. How it happened? With the help of that particular trigger. So it is working absolutely fine and exactly as we need it to work. In the case, uh, we are creating only a single record. But in if, if let's say, we are uh, inserting like many records at a single time, in that case, it will only work for the first record in that particular list, not for all of them. In order to do that, what we need to do is we need to bulkify this trigger. And let's see how we're going to bulkify it. I'll just go back in here. And uh, I've already written out the code for that. Let's check that out. I'll comment the earlier code, the non-bulkified one. And uncomment this one. Okay. So let's have a look at this bulkified one. Bulkified one. Okay, so in this what I've done is I have created a loop in which uh, this list is like, yeah, I mean, uh, in which I have assigned uh, this list to the variable account ACC and on every ACC, the number of employees field value should get updated to 1250, right? That's what should be done. So let's, under uh, let's understand it on the deeper level, on a deeper level, right? So when I assign this trigger dot new to uh, assign this trigger dot new inside a loop to ACC, what it does is it it first uh, goes to record one like the ACC is refer referring to record one and it is updating the value of record one's number of employees field value to one two five zero. Once it is done, it goes on to the next record. That's how the iteration works, right? That's how the loops work. Now ACC is referring to record record two. And after it's done, it's referring to record three. And after uh, updating the value of record three's number of employees field value to one two five zero, it goes to record four, and so on and so forth. So that's how it actually works. If you bulkify it, and how you can bulkify it by just uh, assigning the, assigning this trigger dot new to account ACC, just just by just writing down the loop and making sure that every record inside this trigger dot new list. Uh, like gets executes the code which is written inside the trigger. So this is how you need to bulkify the trigger. And it's a very important concept, by the way. It's not only the best practice, but uh, it is, of course, in the best practices of writing a Salesforce trigger, uh, writing an Apex trigger into Salesforce. But it is a very important aspect, irrespective of, uh, I mean, whether you're working as a Salesforce developer into, yeah, I mean, I mean, wherever you're writing down a trigger, make sure you're, you're bulkifying it. It's it's an absolute necessi necessity. Right? It's, it's not only a best practice, it's an absolute necessity. And even after bulkifying the code, if we are creating only a single record, then also it will work fine. Why? Let's see. In that case, we'll only be having, uh, we'll not be having any of these records, we'll only be having this. Right? Imagine this, this is not going to be there. There will be only record one in, in that case. So it will execute it on record one and it will be done and it's fine. So let's just have a look at it. I've saved it, saved this one. Uh, I have commented the non-bulkified one and let's create another account, right? Yeti coolers, right? 
is the account name, number of employees field is empty and I'll just save this record. And let's see whether it is working for a single record or not, even after being bulkified, it is working. So yeah, that's what is the meaning of uh, bulkifying a trigger and you always always need to make sure that you're bulkifying a trigger and this is exactly what is the use of a context variable like trigger.new let me repeat it back once again let me repeat it back once again uh, its use is to basically access the records because of which the execution of the trigger initiated and it provides you the list of records uh, some majority of the times uh, there's only one record in that particular list uh, but if you are doing a bulk operation uh, then you get more records into that particular list and in order to cater that thing as well you need to make sure that you bulkify the trigger. I hope that makes sense.